All the telescopes you can see here are produced by GSO, Guangsheng Optical, then resold under many brand names. These Ritchie Chrétien telescopes are a popular option in the medium price range. Unfortunately, the ones produced by GSO suffer from a severe problem which limits their use. Some weeks ago I noticed that the edges of my images had noticeably higher pixel values or ADU counts than the center and my flat frames all had a bright outline. When looking through the end of the telescope with the camera removed, I could also see the sky, which isn't supposed to happen at all. Since I almost exclusively use the telescope for photometric or astrometric measurements, this severely limits its usability for me. The effect was hardly noticeable on dark moonless nights, but any stray light would cause the image to brighten. Even worse, and this applies to all use cases, taking accurate flat frames is not possible. Neither to correct vignetting, dust spots, or the camera's intrinsic flat fielding error. So following this discovery, I wrote emails asking for the telescope specifications to GSO themselves and an email to Telescope Express, the reseller I purchased the telescope from. GSO hasn't responded to this day, whereas TS quickly provided the specifications, so big thanks to them. Once I had the specifications of the RC, I could then, with the big help of Dave Rowe, create a model of my telescope and ray trace the path of the light. This showed that the primary baffling in fact was severely wrong. Here you can see a side view of the RC, with the secondary mirror on the left and the camera on the very right. We begin by tracing the path of the light which hits at the edge of the primary mirror and is just able to pass by the secondary mirror's baffling. This is an on-axis ray of light, which means that it hits right in the center of the camera and focal plane, of course assuming the telescope is perfectly collimated. Next we plot a ray of light which is just able to pass by the secondary mirror. After ray tracing, I think this reveals GSO's thought process. They placed their baffling out of the way of this ray of light, allowing it to pass through but blocking anything else. Unfortunately, this is the wrong way to do this. With this baffling configuration, stray light coming in past the secondary mirror can make its way into the sensor without a problem, both on axis, as shown here, as well as off axis. Note that here you only see the rays of light which directly hit the sensor. If light enters from an even more extreme angle, it will hit inside of the baffling and cause internal reflections leading to fluctuating values across all pixels in the final image, as you can see from this yellow ray. The solution to this problem is to extend the baffling to its correct position. Note that the edge of the baffling is now between the outer green ray's path to the sensor and the inner orange ray's path to the secondary mirror. It still allows both of these to pass unhindered. Another solution is to simply reduce the diameter of the baffling, which also blocks light from hitting the sensor. But if you visualize the yellow line representing internal reflections, you can see that this light can much more easily enter without the extended baffle. This is why the extension is much more preferable. While discussing the problem with the RC, a suggestion was made to also add tertiary baffling behind the primary mirror in the focuser to even better prevent stray light while not impacting light transmission from the secondary mirror to the sensor. This in combination with the primary mirror baffling is probably the best solution, though it is a bit more difficult to add. So now you've seen the theory, but how do you actually implement it? The first option is to design and 3D print your own baffling. Over the next month I'll add the correct baffling dimensions for all RC telescopes to the description. The second option is to buy a flat pre-made baffling, though well, this one shown here is not extended and rather expensive, but it is the quickest fix if you cannot create your own. The last thing to consider is how reducing the baffling diameter impacts the light transmission to the focal plane. Here you can see a diagram of an APS-C camera sensor at the end of the telescope. At the edge of the APS-C sensor you only use roughly 10% of incoming light, which is barely noticeable and very easily corrected with flat frames. The transmission at the edge of a full frame sensor is considerably worse at only 72.8% but still usable, though perhaps not for precise measurements. Of course all larger Ritchie Chrétiens than the 10 inch will have a larger corrected and illuminated image circle, so treat this example here as the very worst case. I hope this video will help you using your RC telescopes. The telescopes sold by GSO aren't bad at all, they have an excellent value and material finish, but if you plan to do anything with these, you will have to implement these corrections. These telescopes with the corrected baffling are perfectly good for the price.